what we found in this retrospective study of COVID-19 patients is that we found that estradiol may actually be protective in COVID-19 patients, specifically in female patients, and that men with uh, lower levels of dihydrotestosterone or DHT, DHT may be at a greater risk um, for more severe COVID-19 um, complications. My name is Tallinn MacArthur. I am a third year general surgery resident here at Mayo Clinic. I did two years of research in the lab um, in between my second and third year with Dr. Myung Park, who is one of our trauma critical care doctors. So thank you very much for um, taking the time to look at our article today, Estradiol and Dihydrotestosterone Levels in COVID-19 Patients. And this will be published in the April 2023 issue of Mayo Clinic Proceedings. We started working on this project um, really because I went into the lab at the time that the COVID-19 pandemic was sort of at its, um, you know, one of its peak heights in uh, July 2020. And at the time, we kind of realized that we had a kind of a, an opportunity with COVID to make a difference since we already had the sample collection mechanism in place um, to collect samples and look at coagulopathy in COVID-19 patients. Um, and we found that those mechanisms are pretty similar to trauma patients. But then in doing that research, what we noticed um, and in looking at the literature is that there were pretty clear sex dimorphisms between males and females with COVID-19, um, specifically that it was just consistently shown. And we showed it in our data too, that um, male patients seem to do significantly worse than female patients, both um, with short and long-term outcomes from COVID. So the question we asked ourselves is, well, why is that? What is the difference um, between males and females that are that's causing that? Could some of it be... Um, driven by sex hormones, specifically estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, dihydrotestosterone. So that's the question we asked ourselves when we were looking at this project. This was a prospective um, study. So we went ahead and we were collecting samples from patients with COVID-19 when they came to the emergency department here at St. Mary's. So it's an emergency department cohort, which also means it's an eclectic cohort. So we have patients with a wide range of severity. And we checked sample levels for um, estrogen, as well as dihydrotestosterone, as well as a number of cytokines. And essentially what we found is that our cohort of female COVID-19 patients had lower levels of 17 beta estradiol or a form of estrogen than healthy volunteers. Cause we did have a volunteer group that we were able to use as a reference. Um, and we found that our males um, with COVID-19 patients tended to have again, lower dihydrotestosterone than um, males without COVID-19. And what we actually found that was interesting is that the um, when we did an effect analysis on our female patients, having COVID-19 um, actually was associated with the same decrease in 17-beta estradiol than uh, as menopause. So that was another kind of interesting finding that there really does seem to be a correlation between COVID-19 status and 17-beta um, estradiol levels. And so it kind of gives us an idea of how we should be thinking about patients. It's just another risk factor, right? When we're thinking about strat stratifying, risk stratifying patients, um, the knowledge that um, males do tend to do worse with COVID is one thing, but having an understanding, okay, why is that um, is another. So the fact that males with lower levels of dihydrotestosterone may be at greater risk um, for more severe forms of COVID-19 is a takeaway from this study. And also that 17-beta estro estradiol may be more um, clinically protective, um, I would say would be the main two takeaways. And, you know, the thing that makes sort of put us in a situation and puts Mayo Clinic in a situation that's unique to do this kind of research, I would say is really the multidisciplinary kind of collaborative nature of the work here and the research set up here specifically. So it is pretty unique that we were able to take a a mechanism for a trauma critical care study, right? Collecting samples from trauma patients in the ED, which was the mechanism we had in place at the beginning of the pandemic, work with our clinical uh, translational research unit, work with the emergency department, collaborate with other groups, including hematology and even outside collaborators on coming up with an idea for this project and the mechanism to do it and get it done in, a, to be honest, a short period of time, getting this up off the ground because everyone kind of recognized the clinical need, the clinical urgency, um, and the value of the research. Um, so I think really the buy-in you have at Mayo Clinic from all these groups and the collaborative spirit really put us in a unique position to get this project started in a way that we were able to get cl samples collected and get moving, um, you know, kind of as things evolved with the pandemic. I don't know that this kind of research would have been possible and the rapidity that we did it um, at many other institutions in the world. And really the next steps in this research is understanding why. So ongoing collection um, 
from patients and specifically looking at different time points and patients with different degrees of uh, severity of COVID-19 is the next step, as well as looking at vaccinated patients. When we did this study, not all people were, uh, much fewer people were vaccinated. Um, so that's the other big thing is how do vaccines play into this? Um, so there's all, a lot of unanswered questions. This was an early first step, but we're very grateful to have been able to conduct this project with the support of everyone here at Mayo. If you'd like to learn more, um, we invite you to read this article. It's available online through Mayo Clinic Proceedings, um, and we thank you very much for being interested in our work. We hope you found this presentation from the content of our website valuable. Our journal's mission is to promote the best interests of patients by advancing the knowledge and professionalism of the physician community. If you are interested in more information about us, our homepage is www.mayoclinicproceedings.org. There you'll find access to information for our social media content, such as additional videos on our YouTube channel or journal updates on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter. More information about healthcare at Mayo Clinic is available at www.mayoclinic.org. This video content is copyrighted by Mayo Foundation for Medical Education and Research.